Last year was a really difficult year for us, but it was clear from the outset that we weren't doing very well and so we needed to change things up a little bit. We've got, you know, an uphill battle. We know it's not all going to be easy, but, you know, we're confident that we should be competitive at that level. Of course, there's now lots of pressure on Jamie as a head coach in his first head coaching role um, to try and get the Pirates senior team back up to the top flight. I loved this sport for years, like my, my aunt used to live in America and so I'd always keep sort of up with American sport and then one of my friends, Nicky, someone told me one day he plays American football and I was like, shut up, Nicky lives in Scotland, there's no American football in Scotland. I caught up with him on the train one day and he was telling me about how he was playing up at Cali University and referees of a game that was playing in, in the University League were Pirates players and they said I should come along. I thought, oh well, I'll just go and give it a try. Um, I remember standing in the sideline at Sheffield my last ever game and thinking, yeah, the guys that are here can, can win. And then a couple of them also left. And then they didn't win. So, that was that. Amanda McDonald, who the Pirates chairman, spoke to me one day in Hamilton and she said, you know, I was wondering if you'd be interested in starting a youth team up. We started the Hamilton Bucks in 2012. The first day came, we got a whole load of kids in. I really love going back to look at that photo because it's amazing how many of them actually kept playing. Coaching like that age group is amazing. Like they are all aboard their own personal hype trains. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's everything that I wish I'd done when I was 14. But yeah, you look back at it and you think, God, it's, it's amazing. I started coaching juniors in 2016 as well. Um, coaching receivers there, and then when I retired, I became OC juniors. And I've been coaching in there, but it's really, really good. I love coaching. Never thought I would. I'm all about that energy and hype. So right. I was told literally 10 minutes before you got here. So I'll coach the quarterbacks, which will be primarily um, Neil Bapti and Sam Montgomery. Bapti's just a phenomenal athlete. He can throw the ball really well, um, he runs the ball really well. Generally speaking, you put people around him and he's, he's going to do damage. And then we have Sam, who I coached at junior. Um, and he's he's everything you'd ex have expected a junior QB to be. He's got a little style and pizzazz and an obsession, an unhealthy obsession with Johnny Manziel. Um, but his arm's really good and he's he's getting he's, he's always been really accurate. But he's kind of taken on this whole mentoring type thing. So he's been really, really good in terms of like helping when Sam doesn't do something right, he picks him up on it um, and he tries to like make sure he's giving them wee tips all the time. This year I think uh, a lot of the guys are playing with a bit of a chip on their shoulder. Um, a lot of the guys that are part of the team this year were part of the team last year and previous years where we were successful and we were winning. So what they've experienced last year was nothing like they've ever experienced before a 10, a 0 and 10 season. So a lot of what I think is feeling different between last year and this year is the determination to not let that repeat itself, but at the same time prove that the team are better than, than the record we obviously managed to achieve last year. We come down into this division, we've, we've been in the, the division before, so it's not something new, it's not something that's you know a bad thing. We're just now playing at the level that we should be playing at, but we want to dominate that level. We want to get back to where it was that we were and compete with these, you know, the best teams in Britain. Guys, this is the fucking start. For all you guys that were here at the end of last year, we all talked that we need the fucking pre-season, we need a fresh start, we need the ability to fucking have a go at it. Now we're down in Div 1, this is a Div 1 team, this is not a Prem team. We need to go out and we need to fucking play like we have a bit of attitude about us. They're a, good, they're a, good Div 1 team. They're a fucking great Div 1 team, it doesn't matter, they're fucking Div 1, they ain't Prem. Okay, so they've got, we've got fucking as much right to be Prem as they do. We're both fucking Div 1. That means we need to elevate. 
We need to treat this like I'm going to get better. I don't care if you get beat. I don't want to see people fucking screaming. This will not be perfect. I'll just ruin that fucking bubble for you right now. This will not be perfect. But I need everyone to be busting their hoop to get better today. Because this is the first real chance we have to see what it's going to be like in this division. And we need to fucking, we need to go out and give a good account ourselves against one of the better teams. Otherwise, we might as well enjoy 500. Fuck that shit. I ain't into that. It's fucking win time, okay? Let's get our hands fucking in. Let's go out here with a bit of aggression and let's fucking blow the doors off these cunts. Right, we're gonna go party Sun Sea! One, two, three, party! Yes. Good job, Andy, good job! How many of us just won the Div 1 Championship? Woo! No, fucking no one! You are so excited. Fucking no one, right? But good fucking job, because that's a good step towards it. We're fucking around smashing people. That is bullshit unless we fucking execute. If this is a fucking joke, the door is that way. Right? This is not a fucking joke. So let's fucking get up, let's go on it, and let's actually fucking execute. Because it's flimsy as fuck. We're like, oh, we're at the line. The fucking tempo that we have in some of the practices is fucking gone, man. It's gone. I get that it's hard to get the ball in fast. I get that, right? But that doesn't mean that we low flip fuck. We fucking just, I will, I will be fine, it'll be fine, it's fucking pre-season, it fucking matters, let's fix it now, let's make sure it's right, okay, the next drive we go in, we have to fucking put some plays together, I don't care if we don't score, but I want us to move the fucking ball, because we have had one touchdown drive and fucking shat ourselves, actually shat ourselves. <laughs> I'm going to go back out, I want you guys to regather yourselves, I know the weather's shit, I know the fucking conditions are pretty bad going, let's fucking put a million scores on the board and at least enjoy it, ain't it? You good with that? Yes sir. That's oh. fucking excellent guys. Pass back to See the way we fucking came out today? That's what I want to see. That was fucking great. We're on this. But here's the thing, see today, that's winning nothing. Okay? It needs to get better, it needs to elevate. Let's go boys, party on free. One, two, three! Pirates! Ah, it was good fun. It was good fun. It was good fun. They're missing guys, so that's not like I don't think we I don't think we realistically are gonna kill them that badly if we play them in the game, but it felt like we killed somebody today, and unfortunately. The whole last year when we should have killed people, we didn't, so that was good. The majority didn't have like a football brain where it was like, well I know if this happens, that happens, if this happens, that happens, and I can play chess with a guy. It was just literally a case of, oh, uh, I've got the five yard hitch, and when I run the five yard hitch, the QB will throw me the ball, and it's like, that's just not how this works. So today, there were actual examples where guys adjusted and amended what they were doing to, to be to, to optimise what we were going to get from it. We had a touchdown out of something exactly like that, we are slant out and the DB's already miles inside and he just kind of cheated it up and caught it and scored. So it's perfect. That's what we want. I think we're going to be competitive. That's, that's the only thing that I can take from this, is that people, like, because they're missing loads of guys. We come out, the guys they're missing are still at university. We beat a team that we should have beat. And, like, it, it's kind of the old adage, you can all be what's in front of you, and today what was in front of us we put down we probably should have. So, fine. We did it. I can't, no one's, it's not a bad thing, it's just not a good thing either. It's, it's just that we did what we were meant to do. So, let's not go thinking we're the 07 Patriots quite yet. Uh, so this is Pirates training camp, um, has been for the past two days. Uh, so it was a little bit messed up now, but it's a chance for us to height and everything and really tweak everything to the point where it's excellent for the uh, the end of the season. Start of the season, even. Camp isn't quite as gruelling for me as it is some of these other guys and you can see it in some of their faces come third, fourth, fifth practices of each of each day. Pre-season's gone really well. One of the things that I talked about last week was how much we needed to teach people and we talked about teaching all last year and how we needed a pre-season to get everything taught and I think that's definitely happened. This is my 10th season, I think it is. I'm still learning. 
I'm still finding things that I didn't know before and that I'm picking up and through pre-season it's kind of helping me prepare for, for the games that are going to be coming up. At least for the, the most part we've got a lot of guys who even in the film sessions like are actively telling you oh I didn't realise that's why we did that and things are clicking um, and some guys just looking really really good with little adjustments, little things that improved. It's been really good to see it, it's been good to see people, um, people kind of getting involved in it and, and thoroughly enjoying the whole affair and guys getting stuck in. It's, it's really, really good. I love it. And it was, um, it's something that I probably miss most about playing this camp. Normally in a pre-season, your defence is the one that steps up and, and they tend to be on the ball and, and you know making plays and things like that and your offence takes a little longer to click. It was totally different this year. The offence came out all firing like from day one. And it was, it was really, really exciting to see and people playing with confidence and speed meant that they were obviously not having to think as much and in, in, in football, the less you need to think and you can just react, the better kind of player you'll be and the better team you'll have. For this season in particular, I am very, very confident in, in the team that we've got and our ability to win. I just don't know what we have. It feels so much better. I think that's my biggest thing just now. It's almost trepidation over, I feel like we've got everything that we need to to put up a, a great result in the first game, but will we? Yeah, feeling good. I think we should be able to, should be able to do some things that we saw in film, so it should be good. Yeah, I think it'll be really competitive. I think it's just it's just in the nature of want to play sport. People should go out trying to trying to win, so yeah, expect it to be competitive. We've got lots of things. We've got lots of film. Um, Aberdeen are actually really good uh, in, in terms of like film sharing, so they've got lots of film of us as well. Um, I'm sure they've got some stuff up their sleeve, but yeah, there's some stuff we've picked up that we fancy having a go at. I, I would like to I would like to think that the work that we've been putting in is, is higher than everyone else, but you never really know until you see the results. I think it's going to go well, if not better than well. We've prepared a lot. I think everybody knows what it is that we're going to face, what their job's going to be, and how they need to go about and do it. So. I'm excited to see some of these guys out here getting their first taste of a game, seeing what capabilities they've got and uh, contributing to the team. See, now, now is the time where it fucking, the batons come down, the laughter, all that sort of thing, all the nonsense, all that stops and it's just focus, it's focus about this game. And then see, when we're, once we're done, we can go back to having a great time, but right now, it's focusing on the game. Yep. So let's get a good warm up in. Let's get a good set in these sessions. We'll go for a quick set of team and then it'll be game time. Is everyone good with that? Let's go! Yeah, let's go. Warm up on back to NG Wall. Let's go. Let's go. Coming into the game, you could feel confidence was high with the Pirates. Aberdeen had narrowly won the Division 2 final 13 6 in overtime to earn promotion. And despite the Pirates moving in the opposite direction to join them in Division 1, you could feel the expectations of an opening win was on the cards. Every single player, you want somebody on the back, you want the ball in the end zone, whoever's in the end zone. Get in the end zone and fucking celebrate with them, alright? Let's back up your teammates, let's bring it let's in. Go! Go let's go! Go Pirates! Let's go Pirates! Let's go Pirates! Let's go Pirates! The Pirates started slowly, possibly due to first game nerves. Poor play, penalties, mistakes, and a much tougher Aberdeen team than expected were the cause. Right, here's the fucking thing, we're getting a little bit backed up, we're getting a little bit stressed out, I'm getting a little bit fucking stressed out because all I want is fucking these plays to work. They're going to work, right? But see what's, see what's putting it off is little silly mistakes. So far, we've had about four plays that have, in fact, all five plays that we've run have gone for positive yardage and we've had three penalties that keep setting us back. Over and over and over again, stuff that's basic football, moving forward when we're in motion, can't do that. Not being on the line, can't do that. Okay, we need to bat in the hatchet down. Yes, we've not had refs before, but we're literally just asking for like these problems. Okay, we, we need to like slow ourselves down and go out and play. Okay, now it's pretty clear to me that they are better. There is no question about that. Yeah. We need to raise it. Yeah. We can't just go, off. Oh, fuck, they're better than they were on film. Oh, fucking buffer guys, look here. Oh, great, well that was great, fucking slagging fuck out of that guy, because that's helped us. Let's go do something successful. Be a success, man. Don't fucking, don't be a guy who lets you get self get beat up and then that's the end of the game, okay? Let's go, pirates on three, one, two, three, pirates! <laughs> They did find their rhythm late in the first quarter with passing and running from quarterback Neil Bapti and it was himself who ran in the opening touchdown from 14 yards. Guys, they are making us work for everything. 
But I don't mind a bit of graft, yeah, okay? I don't mind a bit of graft. If the first two drives are, are like anything to, to be questioned, but it's the first two fucking drives of the season. The third one just went for a TD. I fancy a wee bit more. We'll give with that. Yeah. Right, hi, hands in, hands in. Hi, score on three, score on three. One, two, three, score! First TD of the season. Took a few, took a few plays to get the confidence up, I suppose. Not just in the team, but myself as well. Knowing that I can actually pull it. Uh, trusting in my feet a wee bit more, so. Um, big confidence boost for the offense. I think we'll see a difference in the next couple of drives, definitely. A ferocious Pirates defence was making life difficult for the Roughnecks and keeping the Pirates in the contest as the offence continued to struggle. For every good play in offence, it was followed by a bad one. This inconsistency saw them knock on the door of the end zone but failed to capitalise as time expired in a half as they held on to a narrow 7-0 lead. We need to just get these out of holes more often. We need to fucking figure out the, the groups that give us the absolute minimum level of friction with these silly wee things. Like we, we, I mean, we talked about snaps on the way in, but things like receivers not lining up on the line and things like... Uh, the only thing I would say execution-wise that's fucked is is probably being running backs just not taking like what's there for five yards. I'm like, we don't need everything to be a cutback for the house. So we need to fucking fix that offensively, and we need to, we need to just we need things to work because when the, all the things that when they've worked, it's been a case of you know Bacti scrambles for a whole million bunch of yards, but the problem is we're cheesing on all the things that are like let's just use up all our best players. And that's fine to an extent, but there comes a point where it's like we, we need to coach people that have been able to fucking help out because you know when receivers are totally shut down and we're relying on basically back to making a bunch of plays and a couple of bombs over the top to connect, that's not gonna fucking cut it all year. So I all in all it's, we need to fix this. This assuming we come away unscathed from it is gonna be exactly what we fucking needed. <laughs> An absolute slapping off a team that we should have beat down. It's all stupid little things that we're not doing to sustain drives. So it's not that we can't get the big plays. The problem is we're struggling to do that because we can't bring them down, because we can't drive them to want to come in close and stop us getting five yards. And the reason we can't do that is because we'll get indecisiveness, we'll get guys oh, up tight, everyone's like, oh, I'm fucking, I'm gonna explode if I get any more up tight. Just chill the fuck out, okay? And just go out and play because all of you guys, every single one of you, I've seen do all of these things a million times better. We can still beat them, it's just we're getting all up inside our heads because it's going wrong. Now we talked before the fucking game, and what did we say? If it goes wrong, next play, yeah? yeah. Just next play. So we've got a whole half of next plays, we get the ball, we're going to come out, and we're going to go right after it, alright? Hey, smile a wee bit, we are fucking winning, alright? We just need to go out and prove we're fucking winning, not be the losing team with a better score, alright? The halftime talk did not have a desired effect as the offence continued to falter. The defence was in complete domination of Aberdeen, giving them no room to breathe. When the Pirates did get the ball back, they managed to string several plays together for Bapti to run the ball home for his second touchdown of the day and extend the lead to 14-6. Bapti would later add another 53-yard touchdown run to end the scoring and seal the 23-12 victory. Hey guys, firstly, thanks to the fucking lot of you. See this pre-season, it's been fucking hard. Practice guys have been like going to the absolute wits end to try and finish practice. Guys getting there, guys doing all the fucking good shit. I'm absolutely delighted that we got a win. I'm absolutely delighted. That's the fucking, that's the number one thing. Number one thing.
Oh, it feels so good. Is it always not enjoyable? Hey, back to captain today. Three touchdowns, break us off. Let's go, Pirates on three. One, two, three. Pirates! How does it feel to get your first win as a head coach? I knew you were going to ask that question. Um, yeah, gr good. good. It's good. There's always, I'm always going to moan about something. But yeah, it's good. It's great. I'm chuffed. People are, people keep saying well done. I'm like, Thank goodness it's not on one. Aberdeen were really good there. They were comparable to teams we played in the Prem. There were, there were defences in the Prem that I'd rather face tomorrow than I faced them. What they had on film versus what they did today was massively different. Um, they were much bigger physically. Uh, they played a, a style of defence that's really difficult to break down because they just don't really bite up on anything. You know, there was a point I think in the third quarter where we started to really get a groove going. Um, but yeah, it wasn't it wasn't what I think a lot of guys thought it would be. Um, and I think that's a that's a good thing for us. Coming into the season, the Yorkshire Rams were tipped by British American Football News website Double Coverage to win the division title. However, they had not made a championship start, losing their opening game 42-0 to Aberdeen, followed by a second shutout loss 13-0 to Glasgow, before their first win, a 22-6 victory over Gateshead. I think the guys have obviously seen that we cannot presume or assume anything. Like, you know going into a game who it is that you're going to go and face but you don't know how tough they're going to be and Aberdeen was a prime example of that because we did underestimate them, we didn't give them enough credit for, for the defence that they were going to run. The fact that we beat Aberdeen and they beat Yorkshire, us coming into this game today, that doesn't mean anything because we still need to go out there and actually perform. If you don't turn up and play, you're going to lose. Uh, that was one of these things where you almost underestimate a team. I think we underestimated Aberdeen. I mean, even last year when we we were not nearly as uh, as good last year as I think we are this year, and, and I think they were better than all the defenses we faced last year. So I think we have definitely elevated, but I was quite surprised by how good they are, and I'm not at all shocked to see that they're taking it to other teams. Yorkshire, it's not that they do a whole load of things, so it doesn't take um, a whole lot of time to see on film what they're going to come at you with, um, but they. It's one of my kind of favourite principles is that they're, uh, they do really well the, the few things that they do do, so they clearly practice it plenty. Um, there's things we think we can take advantage of, as there are with every team. Anytime you watch film, you see something that you want to go after, but um, as we learn from Aberdeen, things can change. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's what it's going to be, so... I'm calling it. I'm calling it. I fucking told you. Take it easy. You got his voice up. Oh line. What do we practice against every fucking week? You. A four-two. Beating them. Oh, that's so bad, man. What do they come out in? A fucking four-two. Fuck off. Yeah. Give them fucking one, you. Like that. Every play. See, we get this. We're going downtown. Boys. We're going yeah. downtown. They came right on top yeah. of us. We've got to go downtown. We've got to run the ball because we can. We've got to go downtown. I'll give it that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Let's fucking get hands in. Get hands in. Hey, I want more of that. Let's score on team. One, two, three, score! One, one, one! Jesus! going to the air for the first time. The Pirates were like lightning out of a bottle scoring on the very first play of the game. The Pirates start fizzled out as quickly as it started. Yorkshire had not come to make up the numbers and were soon threatening the Pirates' red zone. This left the opening for the Rams' methodical, if unexciting, offence to tie the score with an 11 yard run. Aggressive play calling from the Pirates highlighted the opportunities for big plays, but the inconsistency and errors that plagued them from the first game reappeared. Defensive coordinator McGowan made adjustments to shut down the Rams' offense. As the players were still getting to grips with the adjustments, the Rams took advantage 
and drove inside the 10 yard line threatening to score but were stopped in fourth down. A great run by Doogie Meekham was called back by penalty before Neil Bapti raced home on the very next play from 82 yards to regain the lead for the Pirates. Touchdown, East Coast Drive! The defence now attuned to the Rams' attack repeatedly gave the offence the ball back in excellent scoring position. Doogie Meekin first scored from 10 yards, then from 7, for his third touchdown of the day, before Ruri Malcolm added a 6-yard touchdown run. We are looking good, we're looking good, the offensive line are dominating their defence and I mean a period, not defensive line, actual defence are just being dominated by the line. The receivers are getting in the action, our running backs are being direct, our quarterbacks are taking fucking brave decisions, taking things up the middle. We're looking fucking great right now. See the second half, be even greater. Right? Don't stop now, because I promise you, see that first quarter, that will kill us against a good team. We're already being too big a hole, and it doesn't come as easy as that against great teams. But I'm telling you, if we can go out and we can put 50, 60 up against a team that other people are maxing out around 40, we scare the league. And at this point, it's about making sure people know what's coming, not about, not about just beating them. They're probably already gone first half. They're already feeling bad, they're already down bodies, they're already a wee, bit, a wee bit reeling. This is about making sure other people know that this machine is rolling its way into their town to fucking beat them the fuck up. We all good with that? Yes. Oh, hey, let's get fucking after it second half, boys. Great fucking job. Kenny, Kenny was in the sideline, he's like, can you please extend your drives a little bit? <laughs> I was like, I'm afraid we either have score or don't score. Those are our two. Those are our two, uh, our two offensive outputs just now. The Pirates picked up where they had left off to start the third quarter, shutting the Rams down quickly before adding another score of their own. With a 33 point lead, the Pirates looked to get valuable experience to their backup players. They showed inconsistency and fluctuated between dominating Yorkshire and making mistakes. Yorkshire were able to add to their total to take the score to 39-12, but a safety with the Pirates' defence was then followed by Sam Montgomery completing a touchdown pass to Martin Gallagher to finish the scoring at 47-12. Oh, we started that game out slow as shit. We talked about it all week coming up to it, offensively in particular, we talked about it all week and we were just really, really sluggish. We come out, heads, like it's not even heads down, but sometimes you see Pope walking around like... See when we snapped out of it, it looked fucking great. See that period from about the start of the second quarter right through to like the third, it, it was just absolute lights out offense. We're just tearing them to absolute shreds. That's how it should look. We've got loads of work to do, man, because that was nowhere near perfect. But boy, does it feel nice to get an absolute beat down at home, man. That feels absolutely great. Hey, hands in, hands in. Hey, I fucking, hey, I wouldn't rather it be any other group of guys. I fucking love you boys. Hey, Pirates, let's see one, two, three, Pirates! Hey, it, it was good, good. Um, there are bits of it that are, are uh, concerning is the wrong word, but just, I've talked a bit about like finding ways to win. Like, and it's one of those statements where I'm not really sure exactly what it is that I mean, but there are just times in the past where I felt like when you need it, we find a way to win. And we showed again today that sometimes when we need it, we find a way, sorry, when we have it, we find a way not to get it. So there's that needs taken out because guys running wide open downtown should be able to catch a ball that lands on them and go into the end zone. That shouldn't be a problem. Um, and when we've got you know a clear first down with a running back and we pull and then run outside, we need we need to avoid that stuff. So as far as um, as far as how that went goes, I'm not annoyed when you win 47-12 or whatever it was. The 12 we'd already thrown loads of our backups on the whole second half, so that was great. Um, we got uh, another quarterback Sam almost the whole second half. That was great. Um, 
and we still put up the numbers we did, that's great. But it felt like it could have been 60 or 70. We should have really just torn them to bits. I was saying a rivalry, it needs to, you need to have a few before you can call it a rivalry. Like, I mean, guys, yeah, guys that know each other, play each other, there's like a little bit of like one-upmanship and stuff like that. But I mean, if, if, if we end up playing in the same division for the next five years, that'll be a rivalry. But at the moment, no, no rivalry. They're just close. We, we expect, I mean, our expectations are going to win every single game we play. But obviously, uh, that's not just that simple. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, nah, Sam will be fine. He, he can he can throw the ball. I'm not I'm not concerned about Sam. If it had been last year, then <laughs> uh, losing back to would have been a big a big problem. But that dude can play. This is just like any other game. Remember the wee thing we did? We're, oh, we're getting tense. We're trying to relax. I want you all to like try and play the whole game. Where at any point you could just relax everything down and be like, yeah, I'm good to go. I'm good to go. Okay. We fucking we've got this. We are better football players, and we are fucking we've worked a mile harder. This, this pre-season. You can see that every game we go into, guys' bodies are on the floor, other teams are like flaking out, other teams, Aberdeen lost like five guys during our game, Yorkshire lost about six, they had two linemen down the first drive, okay? See that intensity? We come out, we do it again, we win the fucking game, we go out, yeah? The third contest was a strange affair as many of the Glasgow Tigers had previously played for the Pirates. Glasgow's newly appointed head coach Ryan McCoskey had spent over five seasons playing as a Pirate. Results against mutual opponents would look to favour the Pirates to come out on top, and they started as expected. The Tigers running a similar offence to the Rams, the defence immediately showed its dominance, forcing a turnover to give the Pirates a dream start. Oh, Unbelievable call. Unbelievable. See when I saw it line up, I was like, if he, take, if he just takes us Montgomery had showed why his head coach had faith in him, finding Strew and Bailey for the opening score and setting the tone for the rest of the game. The defence dominated while the offence racked up the touchdowns. They're going to come back out, they're going to come out with all their trick stuff that they've installed purely for this game so that they can run it. We need to go out and finish this. We need to put the foot on the throat and we need to finish it. Now we're already 27 nothing up, next half is nothing each and we try and beat 27, okay? If we get up into the 50s, I consider this done, yeah? Because we've, we've not had a 50 burger yet, not since I've been here. I fancy that, and else fancy that? Yeah boy! Yeah. 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 Aye, heads in, make sure you know what you're doing. If any, anybody has any questions, don't let the play run, okay? Stop someone, ask someone. I don't care if we take five yard penalties because you're taking too long to do it. As long as you know what you're meant to be doing, as long as we're comfortable, we just go with it, we kill it. Um, I fucking love you boys. I love you boys. Let's do it. <laughs> The second half couldn't have started better, with James Lightbody running the kickoff back for a touchdown. He soon turned to Villain as he muffed a punt in the Tigers' nick possession, leading them to their opening score. It wasn't going to affect the result as the Pirates scored two more touchdowns to win the game 47-14. It can be really, really easy to get a really good result in this, and make no mistake, this is a great result. It can be really, really easy to get this and be like, oh man, that's it, we're, we're fucking great. We've won three games. Let's relax, let's relax. That was a good one, that was a good one, it won, guys. A great job, great job. On to the next one though. It doesn't stop now. It's on to Gateshead for the blackout game. We wear all black. We're going to be looking spicy. If you want to wear like all black merch, that's definitely what I'll be doing. Then we go after that. We'll be uh, down to Northumbria. This is in no way near the end. But if we keep going like this, the ending could be fucking nice, guys. Yeah. The ending could be nice, yeah. That felt amazing. Yeah, it was really, really good. I, I just feel like I feel like all the things that we talked about. So when we're talking about um, developing guys and we're talking about like. You know, everything's on coaches. Guys need to put effort in. Everything's on coaches. We've got to constantly be improving. And I feel like today there were so many little things um, that we that we just we did. 
like all the little things we talked about, um, running seams, we, we hit so many seams down the sideline, um, we hit some posts, we, we hit corners, we, we were reading the right guys, Sam was electric, he threw the ball really well for the one go, his first throw was a touchdown pass into the end zone for about 30 yards, everything good happened today, it's, it's what we needed to happen and that's what it's going to look like in a good day, it won't always look like that, but it feels good, the timing was nice for that to happen. Let's just beat let's just beat Gateshead first. I think people people are very, very quick to start looking by and thinking, oh this will be the decider. It's just let's just keep it keep it calm a little bit and relax and allow ourselves to, to play games game by game because we were 0 and ten until like four games ago. So we we need to not get ahead of ourselves. Like we're starting to think, oh this will be the divisional like this will be the decider, this will be blah 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 blah. Stop it. Let's just let's just play. It's not, right, this has been probably in my entire time here, in my entire time ever doing this by the most lackadaisical, lazy fucking approach to a game that I've ever seen. Half that's to do with the fact that the coach kicked off back, half that's to do with loads of other little bits and pieces. <coughs> this can't be the laziest fucking game I've ever seen yet. Yeah. Yeah. I want to send these guys home to making sure that they know that they want no part in this going forward. Give it up. Yes. Yes. The Pirates started with a clinical opening drive that would very much foreshadow the rest of the game. The defence shut down the Senators offence, giving the Pirate great opportunities. It was himself that was their biggest opponent. Big play's been called back for needless penalties time and again. Hey, great job by everyone. That was literally a case of like we kept shooting ourselves in the foot and kept bailing ourselves out. So absolutely terrific job. Let's just keep this up. It wasn't enough to stop the offence though as he continued to mount an assault on the scoreboard. Let's go! Let's go! Look, we just rang pretty much 50. If we'd gone for twos, it would have been 50. We just rang that up on them, right? And we were barely out of second gear. There's way more in here. There's way more. See, next week, it all has to come out. Like, 49-12, come out and, and smoked them. We, we had loads and loads of time for backup guys, which is ideally what we wanted. No, we, we were really low. Like, we didn't really get out of second gear. And I think part of that was that we didn't have to, but the other part of that is you don't want to have the need to do it, to do it, you want to be able to just turn that on. And that's like a sort of less serious version of the problem that we've kind of had the entire time, which is just been able to, uh, been able to immediately come after it and switch on being great, which we seem to struggle to do sometimes. Double coverage, you named it Game of the Week, did they? Uh, yeah, so the game's really important. Um, we've got, uh, obviously, these guys are 5-0, and we're 4-0, so the winner here essentially takes the top of the division. Um, we obviously want to do that. Helps us with our plans moving forward uh, for getting to the playoffs. It would also mean that we've now got a win over every team in the division, so that'd be really good. So yeah, I mean, as they go, it's the most important one yet, but that's only till the end of today, and then there'll be another one. With the top spot in the division at stake, both teams showed their nerves early and mistake-prone offences and dominant defences kept both teams from scoring in the first quarter. Let's just be smart about this man because we, we don't have the ability to fuck this up today. Okay? See all the other games? Yeah, they were shite. See these guys? They're not. I can tell you straight away. Okay, because they're like, go, we've ten, never ten, ran about four plays in the row and got nothing before that. Okay, so let's get the hands in, let's pony up and let's be aware of our job, yeah? Okay, we've got to go, uh, we've got to go score a three. What does he score? It was the Pirates that looked more threatening of the two sides, but they were soon dealt a blow. With Neil Bapte unable for the game, it was Sam Montgomery in at quarterback. A late hit by the Vikings caused Sam to enter the concussion protocol and he would not return to the contest. 
With no other quarterbacks available, the duties fell to wide receiver Andrew Meekin. The offence, now heavily reliant in the run game, managed to force its way down to the six yard line. As he moved into the second quarter, McLaughlin called for a stand in QB to deliver. With the Pirates now in front, Northumberland seemed to implode and saw their offence moving in the wrong direction and conceded a safety, making it 8 0. Injuries to the Pirates' D line were starting to take its toll and the Vikings were starting to find more offence. Not enough for touchdowns, but they were getting into field goal range knowing if they connected with three, they would probably take the win. The kicker was not having his best day. First thing, let's relax. Okay, let's relax. We're out there, everyone's kind of tense because we know we really want this game. We really want it, right? And you can see that, you can see that in everybody's face. Let's not get on it, guys, right? Let's lift guys up. Because I promise you, there's no one in here that is like, ah, fuck up, better, right? Every single, I've literally spoken to every single one of you, a whole bunch of things. I know you all want to win. So just take it from me, don't believe other people. I know you all want to win, I know you all want to be in there doing the damage, right? We just need to relax ourselves. We need to lift everybody else up. If we make a mistake, we need to not get at them. We need to be lifting them up. It's alright, we'll get it next time. We'll get it next time, yeah? We'll give it that. Because we've got to get behind ourselves. If we're not behind ourselves, that's it. That's what we just talk about. Half time clearly favoured the Vikings as he shut down the Pirates' offence completely. The Pirates' defence held firm, forcing another field goal attempt, which they duly missed. The Pirates were trying everything to get the offence going, but it just wasn't sustainable without one of their two quarterbacks. A fumble by Greg Atkinson gave the ball back in field goal range. Another defensive stand resulted in a kick attempt. This time they were able to connect, cutting the lead to 8-3. Uh, <laughs> Momentum had turned in the Vikings' favour and they were in scoring position several times, but the kicker unable to make field goals, the vaunted Pirates' defence kept them out of the end zone. With the Vikings running out of time, they were forced to try and pass for the touchdown, but time and again they were intercepted. The Pirates conceded a safety to give them more field to defend for one last attack by the Vikings. Okay guys, that, we can't do that again. <laughs> we simultaneously Hey, don't even, don't even. We simultaneously made that impossible for ourselves and then kept digging ourselves back out. Yes. See, when people talk about, like, we talk last year about this all the time and I kept telling guys, oh, we need to find that, like, way to find a way to win. That was fucking it. I mean, if there was ever a game in my entire time with the Pirates where we found a way to win, that was it. That was absolutely yeah. phenomenal work. Yeah. Unbelievable, yeah. unbelievable stuff. Do you know the thing that was more important? It wasn't necessarily the win, um, it was the ability to find a way to win. Like there's a, there's a thing that I talked about it a lot last year, and I think I've probably even talked about it to you before, but like there, are, there are, have been a lot of examples recently where we've found ways to not succeed. And that, as much as we made it so difficult for us, we had so many, so many times where we could have had it and we just made an absolute mess of it. We just repeatedly found a way to dig ourselves out. Um, and that was the most important thing because that further down the line is going to matter. It's going to matter that we know how to find a way to win. It's going to matter that we know that we can be backed up on our own five with them just needing to score to win the game and literally us having no answer for it and we found a way out. So that is the most important thing because that's the mark of mark of a good team. If you play badly, find a way to win. Um, so yeah, I think the next four games, what we're probably looking to do is just to 
um, trying to achieve the same things that we've been trying to achieve. I think, aside from the Northumberland game, we have rotated quite a lot and um, we've been trying to get guys in and that's definitely part of the whole master plan. So, yeah, so Glasgow, I think, the first game was 47-14. Uh, the first game was Sam. This game is more than likely going to be Bapti. I think what we'd probably like to see is just the ability to do um, a lot of the same things that we did through the air, but potentially be more dangerous in the ground, which is, is where a lot of Baptist strength lies. Uh, the word on the street is that Yorkshire have um, have some guys back that they didn't have in game one, so that's interesting to know. Yeah, I, th I think it's just going to be a case of the exact same thing, though. In, in the first game, we were sort of cagey, but that was our first home game, um, and we probably spent a bit too much time beating ourselves up so I think in the second game we got to come out the way we did in the second quarter against them which was, was really a total domination by us, it was a good job so Aberdeen are still if not the best defensive division then they're certainly the top group um, so it would be really good for us to go out and actually take on that defence and, and go beat it because I think the first game we maybe survived it a little bit more um, they definitely stopped us scoring and stopped us moving the ball more than anybody else have. Yeah, Gateshead were struggling, and you know they, they were fairly clear about that when they came up to us. So when we go down there, you know they, they'll they'll have things that they want to do that they think we'll be able to get at us. But we would hope that the guys that we've got are able to do a really good job really quickly. On a wet and windy day, with a crowd gathering and the Pirates at full strength on their home field, there was no excuse for their unbeaten run to come to an end today. Having won the away fixture against Northumberland without a quarterback for most of the game, it felt like a tough contest, but one where they should prevail. The game appeared to start well, with quarterback Neil Babti using his legs in third down for a huge gain. It was not to be as a penalty brought the play back. This, unfortunately for the Pirates, would be repeated many times during the course of the game, almost to the point of ridiculousness. Guys. So just now we're nearing double figures and flags. It's the first quarter. Okay, we're near double figures. Here's the thing, right? See the refs, it's the thing we've talked about for the start of the year. We have to play to what they're calling, okay? Now see these holds? I, I'm, I'm with you, right? I'm with you. I, I, think I think it's wrong, but it doesn't matter. What I think is irrelevant, what they think is irrelevant, we've got to make sure that we're not holding. Now the last one there we had, it was a, a illegal block in the back. See, if in doubt, just go to the next guy. Let's do everything as squeaky clean as we physically can. Squeaky clean as we can. Because see if we do, we're fucking off to the races. All of this stuff's working schematically. They have no answer for how to deal with the swing. Schematically, they have no answer for how to deal with our, our run game. We're running right at their best player. I called in a bunch of bad plays there and we made them all work. The problem was, we're getting called for holding, we're getting called for blocking the back. Let's just be as smart as we can. If we're meant to crack down on a guy and he turns away from us, don't hit that guy. If he even turns side on, don't hit that guy. If in doubt, if there's any way, if it's not like square on, don't hit him, okay? As the Pirates tried to fix their blocking problems that were causing so many penalties, it allowed the Vikings to assert control over the game. While they were not able to make much headway against the Pirates' tough defence, they were able to constantly win the field position battle due to better special teams play. I keep trying to articulate to guys, I know what the rules are, right? And you know what the rules are, and we know that we don't agree with this, but nonetheless, if that's what they're calling, this is what we have to play against, okay? There is no other way through this. There is no other way, okay? Let's just be smart. Good job, guys. We say there's probably three or four of them holding in every single play. Okay. They're not blocking. They're just teach them to block. They're just grabbing right away. Fist closed. Go in with fist closed. That's what you should be teaching them. Go in with fist closed. They're being okay. taught. I mean, this is from what the lineman asked you before last game. Is they're going in with their hands, grabbing, and then doing that. Uh, steering wheel. That's yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. That's out here. Thank you, sir. Right guys, hey, hey guys, let me be perfectly clear, let me be perfectly clear, because the start of this isn't good. See the amount of, oh yeah, but, all but this, all but that, all but the next fucking thing. I'm sick of that. 
I'm sick of, aye, but it wasn't this, it wasn't that, it wasn't, it. see if it's called, it is, it's a fact, it is, okay, it's on the stats, I don't care, I actually do not care, so see at that point, when it's been called, shut up and get out of the way, next play, now I can't, I'm trying, I'm trying as hard as I can to try and G guys up and be like, you know, we need to do this, we need to do better. But there's a point where we get to where you're just not, like everyone is like, oh yeah, but, oh yeah, I know you're saying that, but, 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 but is bullshit, man. But is bullshit. Find a way. Find a way to be better. Find a way to improve. We'll, we'll try and coach you as much as we can from this day going forward. We'll try and make sure these things never happen again. We try that all the time. Every game, we come away and go, do you know what we need to work on? This, that, and the next thing. But see the thing that I can't do in game day is I can't fix the world. I need you guys to find ways to do that for me. Okay? Now, I know it's a big ask. And I know that we're talking about things that, like, you know, we... we God, I hope we never, ever talk about it again because whatever way you think on it, whatever way you lie on it, it just is what it is, okay? The second half continued as a first, with Neuroside able to take control of the game and the penalties continuing to halt the Pirates' offence. The crowd's anger at the amount of penalties and lack of scoring in the game was starting to show their displeasure. Unnecessary reference. As the game moved into the fourth quarter, the Pirates were threatening, but penalties continued to plague them. It was the Vikings special teams that brought the opening points, pinning the Pirates at the one-yard line, followed by another holding call gave the Vikings a safety and a 2-0 lead. Finally, a successful drive by the Vikings resulted in a field goal attempt. This extended the lead to 5-0 and gave the Vikings a crucial head-to-head -head tiebreaker. Just sucks. Just sucks. Uh, that's unquestionably the worst uh, offensive performance I've ever been part of. Yeah, period. So it, we probably had about 250 yards of penalties. If that's maybe on the light side, I mean it was constant. Um, so that didn't help. That basically kept us pinned the whole day. We couldn't get any sort of forward momentum. Um, and we, it just, it came down to us just being totally incapable of executing, which is really frustrating because the last game against the same team, we struggled to execute because we had no quarterback and this time we had the quarterback and every time we executed it just seemed like there was another flag on the ground and you don't know how it is that we're meant to beat that because this is like the first time the referees called it every single time and told us none of our guys are are blocking they're all holding i just don't know where that is all the other games so something something was amiss we need to fix it Every, everybody's busy finding blame for why People could find a hundred reasons why something didn't work before they find one reason why they could have made it work. The Pirates made the long journey south to take on Sandwell Steers in the quarter-final matchup as the number two seed in their division. Sandwell held the top ranking in all of Division 1 and had romped their division, winning every game. The offence averaging 47 points a game and the defence conceding less than five. While the challenge looked astronomical, the feeling in the team was of an unsure confidence. They had done their prep and while Sandwell looked great on paper, the level of competition they faced did not seem to be the same level as the Pirates. Yeah, we upped the number of practices, so we had a good sort of two-day practice last Sunday um, and then uh, we had the Tuesday night practice as well and it's just sort of increasing the amount of time you've got. There's always, you know, you always have um, ideas of we can do X, Y and Z, but what you don't necessarily have is the time to do Y and Z. So all we've really done is given ourselves more time and more opportunity. They're, they're, they're good, like, there's no doubt about it, um, they, could, they could be playing in the top half of the, the Prem right now, um, it's just that simple, they're, they're dominant, can we win? Yeah, yeah we can win. Hey guys, 
let's go out and have fun. Okay, see, see, one of the things that, that made me feel so down for like the whole last game scenario was how, how everyone like got so tight and so worked up and stuff and we just weren't having fun and that was the biggest problem. Okay, all this game isn't going to be won today. Put all the effort in you can, but this should have been won the last 364. All right, it's that simple. So let's just get out, let's have fun, and let's do all the things we do to the best of our ability. Let's graft like fuck. That doesn't mean we don't put effort in. The effort should be the highest it's ever been. But this is now this is now the chance to have the fun. Yeah, because yeah. the, the graft has all happened. We're comfortable with that? Yes, sir. Let's, let's go a fucking good day out. We've got to warm up. We've got to start off. We've got to G Wall and Bapti. Hey, right, hands in before we go. We'll go Pirates on three. Okay. Hey, let's go Pirates on three. One, two, three, Pirates! <laughs> The game kicked off with the Pirates receiving the ball, but it was the Sandwell defence that got the first win of the day, forcing a three and out. With the Steelers on the ball, they did manage to gain a first down, but they were finding the Pirates defence more than capable. The two teams were at a stalemate, forcing each other to punt, until an error by the Sandwell punter gave the Pirates great field position. Sandwell retaliated with a good drive of their own, running and passing the ball well as they closed in on the Pirates end zone. The Pirates were handed good full position again and turned up the intensity. A great kick return set Sandwell up well for their first points of the game, but the Pirates defence made sure they didn't progress any further forward. The Pirates had a long field to work with, and while Sandwell were shutting down the run game, it was their aerial attack that was keeping them moving. As time ran out in the half, the Pirates were unable to add to their 20 0 lead. Sandwell were still fighting to get on the scoreboard. They drove the length of the field, but time was not on their side. The second half started the same as the first, with both defences on top. Sandwell did start to make some progress and found more yardage with the run game. They were soon stopped, which brought out their punt team. This gave them the momentum they needed, and the run game was now finding holes in the Pirates' defence. With the score 26 in the game in the fourth quarter, time was running out for Sandville. They were not rushed and using a varied attack to work their way methodically down the field. The Pirates had lost a touch of magic they had in the first half, being close to making huge plays but not quite able. These allowed Sandville to stay in offence and matriculate their way towards the end zone. Yes! Yes! Let's go, Let's go, 
After the big stop by the defence, the Pirates adopted a more conservative approach, looking to run the ball and shorten the game while they held the 14-point advantage. Sandwell had to respond with time running out and be more aggressive with her play calling. With the score at 20 to 12, Sandwell went for two points, knowing it would be the only way to win the game. At 20 to 14, momentum was now fully on Sandwell's side, with the Pirates knowing they needed a good offensive drive. Everyone could tell at this point a touchdown would win the game. The Pirates still had one last chance. See the first thing? I really hope, I really, really hope this sucks for everyone as much as it feels like it sucks for me right now. If you can see if it does, you're going to get better. It's that simple. And I see guys, le legit guys crying on the way through. None to be fucking ashamed over that. That means this matters to you. And if it matters that much to you, I will fucking take a bullet for you guys. Because that's how much it matters to me, okay? It sucks. This is the worst part of football. The worst part, no doubt about it. Now here's the thing. That first half, when we came out, that was like a, a flash of what this could be. This is the first real year, I ignore them, this is the first real year that we've had a chance to get in. We've got teaching guys, we've got working hard, we've got everything back, we've got the vibe going again, we've got the engagement, guys are starting to get involved, and guys care this much. See last year, the own 10, guys are like, thank fuck that's over. See this year, we're now crying because it is. And that, like, it gets me here, man, and it, this is the worst fucking shit to ever talk about. It. All these ideas, depending on what happens today, what I'm going to say, it's all out the window, man. I'm fucking so proud of every single guy here. I'm so proud of y'all. This is no longer a case of, oh fucking thank god that's done. Right in here, this should be a case of, I want to come out and fucking bang these guys next year. And I want to come out and bang every single other team by 80. I want to fold the league because we're doing them all so badly. It's that simple. And that's how we have to feel about it. You have to come out and losing. There is no shame in losing. But what there is shame is, fuck this, I'm, that's me. I'm out, I'm out. Fucking, I, I can't do this. I can't, I can't fucking lose. Just get back on the horse. Get going again. All excuses go in the bin, and this off-season has to be the one. This has to be the one. Hey, hey boys, I fucking love every single one of you guys. Every single one of you. This has been the fucking, after last year, this has been one of the best years of football I've ever had. I've enjoyed it so much. So if you guys are fucking keen, let's get back on this pony and let's get going again. Yes, cool. yes, cool. So how was that? Eh, uh, that was shit. Oh, we've, we've seen plenty of comebacks, more than two I've been involved in teams have came back from massive deficits to beat us, so it's it's not, I don't think there was ever a time where I'd say I felt like we were done. I, I feel like there was a lot today where we we did what we are capable of, perhaps we did things that we've not, um, we did things more fluently than we've done at other times in the year, 
Um, I think just at the end of the game, we should have uh, tried to uh, we should have tried to win and not slowed down to win the game. Yeah, you could definitely call it my inexperience. Like I, I just shouldn't have I just shouldn't have changed what I was doing. I should just have continued continued throwing and continued slinging it and continued doing everything we were going to do. Um, I think we just thought there was less. We didn't think there was less time there was. We we knew exactly how much time there was. I think we just underestimated how quickly they could move. Or I did. So yeah. what now? Start again tomorrow. because they have the stats where they've won in it. Do you know what's not in it? Me. Do you know why I'm not in it? Because you suck. Because they... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ass. This is my 1986 pencil drawn portrait of Tom Selleck, which um, should probably go uh, with my floor. Um, it's the jazziest combo in history. This interview is sponsored by Pepsi Cola. Smooth. <laughs> <laughs> the receiver we've already discussed. If anybody out there is uh, is one of these Gen Z guys who knows how to make a gif, if we could have that for like loading screens. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> make sure Bapti knows this. I'm going to put this on, and then I'm going to tighten it a little bit. <sighs> Bapti, like you're it. so fat, man. <laughs> I kept the ball for an 11 yard gain, making it past the sticks. It's a first down. Go Sports. <laughs> I'm not gonna ask. Oh, is this the toilet? I didn't think that was a change. Oh, sorry. Fucking bastard. Oh. We hate Kenny. We hate him. So, there were less Fs there. That's for sure. What did you have for breakfast? Uh, oh, chicken and rice. Yeah, I had a shake this morning, got some toast, then I went up the road, made some wraps. It's awesome. Sam and chicken and rice. I was like, for breakfast? breakfast? Chicken yeah. and rice? That's dedication. What'd you have for breakfast? Uh, I had uh, Cajun chicken and bacon on pancakes with maple syrup. That sounds very good. Actually. That was amazing. Fucking Sam had chicken and rice. I was like, chicken and rice? For breakfast? For breakfast. He was like, yeah. I'm like, okay. A strange boy. I've got a wee tear in my shorts, so do you want me to sit like this? No, please no. If I, do, do it if you want, yeah. If, you, if that's how you want to come across on camera, Jimmy, you do that. Look at how panicked you are. You're more worried about me being embarrassed than I am. That's always been the case, to be fair. Just make sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this was brought to you by Freeway Cola, which is oh, Lidl's just brand. Not so Pepsi Cola this time. <clears throat> Can I play culture? That's uh, pure authority. Didn't give me a whistle, I'm getting fucking excited. Think I'm at a rave. Gates said it's a blackout game. They look like Lewis Capaldi, they say spoiler alert. Fucking amazing. I just want the people at Amazon Prime to know that I'm available for any sort of engagement. I will do anything for money. Anything. I